Welcome back to my next video. Today's topic is fungal keratitis. Introduction Fungal or mycotic keratitis is a leading cause of ocular morbidity, opacification and preventable blindness. It's proposed that the frequency of this type of keratitis is more in developing countries as compared to developed countries. First, it was described in Germany by Leber in 1879 in a 54-year-old farmer. Fungal keratitis represents one of the most difficult forms of microbial keratitis to diagnose and to manage. Failure with medical management alone is common, both medical and surgical success may be limited. Morphology and classification of fungi The simplest type of fungus is the unicellular yeast. Elongation of the cell produces a tubular thread-like structure called hypha. Hypha means the web. Mycelium is a network of hypha. From mycelium extend fungi. There are a few types of fungi. Filamentous fungi or molds. The subtypes of those are septate hypha. Uh, they can be pigmented and non-pigmented. And non-septate organism. They do not form cross walls such as muco. And there are also yeasts. They produce opaque, pasty, creamy colonies on the surface of culture or media such as candida. And demorphic fungi, they exhibit properties of yeast when cultivated at 37 degree and molds when grown at 25 to 30 degree. Examples include blastomyces or cryptococcus. Risk and predisposing factors of fungal keratitis. There are ocular factors and systemic factors. From ocular factors, those are contact lens wear, chronic ocular surface disease, chronic keratitis, chronic trauma, immunosuppression, corneal anesthetic abuse, chronic use of broad spectrum antibiotics, prior corneal surgery, and corneal trauma with soil organic matter. From systemic factors, those can be diabetes mellitus, HIV disease, and leprosy. Pathogenesis. Fungi enters into the corneal stroma through a defect in the epithelial barrier. Once in the stroma, fungal pathogens multiply and proliferate via production of several proteases and mycotoxins, resulting in severe tissue necrosis. Through an intact testament membrane, the organism can penetrate into the anterior chamber and other interocular structures. Filamentous fungal pathogens may also extend from the cornea into the sclera, and fungal dissemination into the anterior chamber and or in the into the sclera is associated with poor outcomes. Clinical presentation. Manifestation of fungal keratitis lasts normally between 5 to, two, to 10 days. Symptoms. The general symptoms would be foreign body sensation, gradually increasing pain and a diminution of vision. Signs. There are specific signs. Uh, those are filter margins, elevated edges, a rough texture, satellite lesions, uh, gray-brown pigmentation, color button configuration, fixed hypopion, and lack of corneal sensation as well. Non-specific signs are conjunctival injection or epithelial defect. Let's continue with some specific types of fungal keratitis, Fusarium keratitis. Fusarium keratitis has a more severe course so that deep extension and perforation may occur in few weeks. Aspergillus species, on the other hand, causes a less severe and not so rapidly progressive keratitis and can be successfully treated. Clinical features uh, may involve any area of the cornea. White, yellow or gray ulcer is very characteristic. Uh, the ulcer can also be raised at edges, grows in extension and depths. Satellite lesions with feathery margins of ulcer is also one of those signs for Fusarium keratitis. Fusarium keratitis can completely destroy the eye in a couple of weeks. Those are a few clinical samples and note here a feathery margins of the ulcer. And here you can see a satellite lesions those are like uh, infiltrates intrastroma which can be around of the main ulcer here you can see double layered hypopion thick plaque and double layered hypopion as well 
Dematitious keratitis, I hope I pronounce it right. Um, these fungi are melanized fungi that produce pigments and the most reported etiologic agent is curvularia fungi. Clinical features include the ulcers with whitish to white yellowish corneal pitting, corneal edema and infiltration in the peripheral part of the ulcer, immune ring, hypopion, iritis, iritis and endophthalmitis. And those are a few clinical samples, node brown pigmentation uh, in the surface of the ulcer. And here another sample of these pigmented ulcers. Here we can see also grayish infiltrates with creamy exudates. Here we can see endothelial plaque with iris per with perforation and iris prolapse and irregular feathery margins and dry texture. Here we can see a candida keratitis with overlying intact epithelium. Here we can see elevated corneal lesion, gray dirty white surface with a ring infiltrate and a hypopion. Here we can see also a color button configuration of the infiltrate. In this slide we can see an active fungal uh, infiltrate and the same case of the ulcer showing signs of healing after topical natamycin therapy. In this case, we can see a deep uh, infiltrate and ulcer with a hypopion, which was caused by cephalosporium infection and it didn't respond to medical treatment. And the patient had to underwent a penetrated keratoplasty surgery. And you can see this deep infiltration on the graft. And if you may look carefully, you can also see a fibrin overlying the lens. And this is the same patient one year after the penetrating keratoplasty. Here we can see the case of natamycin deposits. Um, yeah. Laboratory investigations. Corneal scrapping provides diagnostic clue and it also may be therapeutic by the, the bulking of the organism and corneal scraping will bridge the epithelium for better penetration of the antifungal agents. Laboratory diagnosis includes direct microscopy, polymerase chain reaction and confocal microscopy. Medical therapy. Uh, for your general information, what we have to know that medical management of fungal keratitis is really problematic. There are no standard guidelines for treatment of fungal keratitis. Topical antifungal therapy is the standard medical management for this type of keratitis. One or more topical antifungals are usually uh, can be also combined with systemic support of oral antifungals. The most common classes of antifungal used for medical therapy include the polyans and azoles. Uh, among the polyans, the most used compounds have been amphotericin B and natamycin. So let's continue then with pharmacological treatment options. So there are polyans, they bind directly to cell membrane sterols leading to cell death. And the sample of polyans is amphotericin B. The main characteristic is that it's a first-line therapy for candida species and uh, has also a good to moderate activity against Aspergillus fusarium species. Um, in order to prepare the topical form, the compound has to be diluted with dextrose or distilled water to obtain a concentration of 0.15%. Uh, percent. Uh, here I also listed some dosage of for intravenous, intracameral and intrastromal um, administration. It's uh, used mainly for the management of superficial fungal keratitis and its effectiveness is totally dose dependent. The toxicity is, um, as I said, is dose dependent as well. So when it's used uh, equal or less than 0.15%, then it has less toxicity and the water soluble formula is also less toxic. And what we also have to know that before starting a local therapy, we have to do a corneal debridement since polyans and uh, other types of uh, local antifungal drops, they do not penetrate through intact epithelial barrier. So let's continue with uh, polyans and the next type is natamycin. This is the first topical uh, drops which were FDA approved. Uh, these drops, they have good activity against most fusarium, aspergillus and less effective against candida species. The topical administration is between 2.5 and 5% of dosage and intravenous and intracameral administration is not available. 
It's used as monotherapy for the superficial infections treatment and it can also be combined with um, systemic antifungal um, medicaments in severe cases. Then azoles, they inhibit a cytochrome P450 enzyme. Uh, a general information about azoles that they were developed as a less toxic alternative uh, for amphotericin um, medicament. In 1981, FDA approved the use of oral ketoconazole as the first compound, uh, compound available for the treatment of systemic fungal infections. All um, Azoles they prepared extemporaneously, except for clotrimazole, which exists as a 1% cream or suspension for dermatological use. Toxicity um, consists of burning sensation and contact dermatitis. In case of local usage of this medicament, then irritation might also be a case. There is no significant corneal toxicity uh, known. Uh, the patient might have blurred vision uh, on installation. Um, might be also um, ocular discomfort is uh, as a case. And then hyperemia, dry eye feeling, photophobia, and change in color vision. Then we continue with another type of azoles uh, is a voriconazole. The main characteristic is a broad spectrum with good activity against candida and aspergillus and good to moderate activity against fusarium species. It's less effective against fusarium, fusarium solani isolates. 1% eye drops were found to have strong tissue penetration and unlike some triazole antifungals, uh, which are interconazole and ketoconazole, it's orally available. Uh, the topical use is with a 1 to 2% of dosage. Oral administration is between 200 and 400 milligram per day. And there is also some dosage listed here for intrastromal and intracameral administration. Toxicity um, includes nausea, frontal sensitivity, hallucinations might also be in some rare cases, headache, uh, visual disturbances and rash. Another type of azole is fluconazole. The main characteristic is that oral administration presents a good ocular penetration. It's less effective against Fusarium solani. Isolates, the topical administration presents a good corneal penetration and it has also a broad spectrum with uh, activity against candida species and it has limited or no activity against Fusarium uh, species and oral administration is between 100 and 400 mg per day. The toxicity includes headache, hives, itching or skin rash and abdominal pain as well as hematemesis. Another type is uh, ketoconazole. It has a good to moderate activity against candida species, but has limited activity against aspergillus or fusarium species. So topical administration uh, with a dosage between one and two percent and oral administration is between 200 and 400 milligram per day. Itraconazole, it has moderate activity against candida and aspergillus species. It can be used for long term maintenance, treatment of chronic fungal infections, the oral administration administration includes um, between 100, 100 and 200 mg per day and it has also poor ocular penetration. So then uh, pyrimidines, they affect the fungal DNA preventing cellular replication. Pyrimidine include a flucytosine. Um, it has a great activity against yeast such as candida, cryptococcus and a variable accessibility against aspergillus. It shows resistance to many other uh, agent, etiological agents that cause fungal keratitis. That's why it's better to use a dose medicament in combination with amphotericin B due to their synergistic uh, effects. Then other antifungals, they include pavidone, iodine, and in several cases, 2.3% uh, of this solution was successfully used in the uh, fungal keratitis treatment caused by candida albicans and Ancremonium strictum. And nevertheless, in comparative study, by using 0.5% of this solution showed no benefit compared to 5% natamycin suspension in the Fusarium solani keratitis treatment. There is also a polyhexamethylene biguanide or PHMB antifungals. The antimicrobial efficacy has been demonstrated on acantamoba, 
uh, infection and um, hachetti by using 0.02 to 0.053 percent solutions without causing side effects. Corticosteroids, um, as we know, they suppress the inflammation by interfering with the normal immunologic response to various stimuli. The advantages of using corticosteroids include inhibition of cellular infiltration, opacification, scarring, release of toxic enzymes, neovascularization, and it can also be very beneficial for patients after keratoplasty as a pre uh, prevent ingraft re rejection. These advantages include penetration to deeper layers of the infection and um, also uh, it can also reduce antifungal agents' effectiveness. Systemic antifungals, the indication for those are very large ulcers, severe deep keratitis, scleritis, endophthalmitis, and uh, systemic antifungals can also be used as a prophylactic after penetrating keratoplasty for fungal keratitis. What we have to know that the most frequently used oral antifungal is keratoconazole, which is given in a dose of 600 mg per day. It's mandatory to assess liver function tests every two weeks after starting ketoconazole, and systemic therapy is given for a period of uh, six to eight weeks. The algorithm Algorithm to therapeutic management of fungal keratitis. So after laboratory investigation, when we define the presence of high fur, for example, first what we have to do in any of the fungal keratitis cases, we have to do epithelial debridement and start a local therapy. And in this specific case, it would be a first choice as anatomycin 5% or a second choice voriconazole 1% or chlorhexidine 0.2%. In case of a presence of yeast-like fungi, again, epithelial debridement with uh, amphotericin B as a first choice and voriconazole as a second choice. So in case of poor response of a uh, high uh, fungi, then we have to check an uh, antifungogram, then we can start a combined um, treatment combining natamycin with chlorhexidine or natamycin with voriconazole. Then we might do also interstromal or intracameral injection and start a systemic therapy. In case of poor response with a um, yes-like fungi, then we would again check the antifungigram, then also perform intrastromal or intracameral injection with additional systemic therapy. In case of a good response, then we will just continue the therapy during uh, 6 to 12 weeks. Response to therapy, the clinical signs of improvement would be diminution of pain, decrease in size of infiltrate, disappearance of satellite lesions, uh, rounding out of the fitter margins of the ulcers and hyperplastic masses sheets. Here is the sample of resolution of fungal keratitis on topical natamycin therapy. Here we can see uh, those active infiltrate and here is the resolution and rounding of the infiltrate. During the therapy, what we also have to know that broad spectrum antibiotics drops also could be given in order to prevent secondary bacterial infection. Additional cycloplegics, for example, might be also uh, a case in order to decrease the pain. Uh, then in order to decrease, for example, symptomatic intraocular pressure um, increase, we could also give some um, drops uh, of anti-glaucoma medications. And um, the eye should be examined twice daily, preferably under the slit lamp. Once the infiltrate started resolving, we might reduce the antifungal um, therapy accordingly. Surgical therapy. Let's start with epithelial debridement. It improves a drug penetration, as I already mentioned. It may be repeated within 24 and 48 hours in some cases. It's also an excellent procedure for removing necrotic tissue from the cornea. And as I already also mentioned before, it increases drugs uh, topical efficacy. Then amniotic membrane transplant, it reduces pain, inflammation, as well as neovascularization and stimulates re-epithelization and minimizes scarring. Then we continue with conjunctival flying transposition as another method of surgical therapy. The indication is corneal thinning with risk of perforation, peripheral, peripheral ulceration refractory to drug treatment. Uh, 
unavailability of donor corneal tissue or antifungal medication can also be as an indication for conjunctival flap tr transposition. And there is also a Gunderson technique uh, when conjunctival, conjunctival flap covers the entire cornea. And this is the sample of conjunctival flap transposition in mycotic keratitis treatment. Keratoplasty, uh, the indications are infection spreading to the limbus and sclera, risk of endophthalmitis, worsening the prognosis um, such as perforation or deep keratitis. And this is also a method of choice in order to preserve the eyeball integrity. Key points of this procedure that deponation at 1 to 1.5 mm from the affected area should be performed. The risk of rejection is higher when grafts larger than 8 mm are needed. Uh, interrupted sutures should be used. A topical antifungal treatment should be maintained during the postoperative period of time. Systemic treatment is also recommended, and steroids used in these patients is very controversial. We have to really check it uh, post-surgically when and how to start with steroid treatment. So this is the case of a patient where we can see a fungal corneal lesion uh, in the first picture and then uh, the fungal keratitis was kind of controlled during the whole period of time before keratoplasty surgery and then keratoplasty was performed in order to remove the damaged uh, corneal tissue. And in the last photo we can see the um, transparent graft uh, and there are no signs of recurrences and the patient continued a uh, local as well as systemic and the fungal uh, medication post-operatively. And here we can see another sample uh, of fungal keratitis with active uh, fungal infection and the fungal corneal ulcer spreads to almost all layers of the cornea which tends to perforate with hypopion. But after um, penetrated keratoplasty, the inflammation of the anterior segment and anterior chamber was reduced at one day after total corneal transplantation and in a photo of C and D we can see that the inflammation of the anterior segment and anterior chamber is gradually alleviated and controlled and then in the last photo we can see that corneal graft is transparent and visual acuity in this case was also increased. Then cross-linking uh, therapy, um, as we know already cross-linking has been proposed as an adjuvant treatment for infectious keratitis and was called as a photo-activated chromophore uh, keratitis treatment or PAC-CXL and this method is really good by destroying microorganisms DNA and RNA through photooxidation. and in the other studies the response to CXL in fungal keratitis was variable and it should be considered that the infiltrate of the infection should not be deeper than 250 micron depths and this method can be used in any um, stages of the infection but preferably of course at, in the early stages of the infection not in the late then there is also a method uh, called a targeted drug delivery tdd method uh, it achieves better drug concentration at the affected site and can achieve better outcomes. The advantages is that um, it provides concentration of drug in the anterior chamber and deep stromal layers in a short time and can be repeated safely. Intracameral agents as compared with topical medications have better fungicidal action. These advantages are that intracameral agents can be a potential cause of toxic reaction, reactions in anterior chamber. Intrastromal injections, they might um, be a reason of new satellite lesions in a clear cornea, um, clear corneas part, and there is also a chance of perforation in the anterior chamber during the intrastromal injections. So the, there are a few types of targeted drug delivery. Uh, first is an intrastromal injection. The corneal scrapping should be performed for standard microbiological investigation prior to administration of intrastromal antifungal uh, injection. The drug is injected in four to five um, 
divided doses around the abscess to form a deposit of the drug around the circumference of the lesion to, to barrage the entire abscess. Then another type is intracameral injection when we inject the antifungal medicament directly into the anterior chamber and uh, the administration should be done in strict uh, aseptic conditions, yeah, preferably in the operating room. Anterior chamber entry should uh, preferably be d uh, done from inferotemporal side. This is the most accessible part. And in cases of overlying corneal opacity, an anterior chamber entry should be made from other accessible sites. And um, anterior chamber is entered with a 22 to 23 gauge needle to facilitate extrusion of exudate hypopion from anterior chamber. So, in general, a lot of studies was done uh, based on my mycotic ulcer treatment, um, and there is also mycotic ulcer treatment trial one, which concludes that in fungal corneal ulcer cases with filamentous fungal keratitis, particularly uh, the Fusarium species, uh, patients treated with natamycin had a better outcome than those treated with voriconazole and the difference in outcome in other species were not significant. So voriconazole should not be used as monotherapy in the treatment to Fusarium keratitis. Mycotic also treatment trial 2 concluded that the addition of oral voriconazole to topical antifungals does not provide any therapeutic benefit for advanced filamentous fungal ulcer cases. So this was everything about the therapy. I'm sure during your experience you would create your own standard guidance for treatment of uh, different kind of cases but as I always say there is no standard in anything in medicine. There is just an approach based on the clinical picture and the response for any disease where you can anytime modify your therapy. So that was it. Thank you for watching. Till the next video. Stay positive, stay healthy. Bye.